Welcome back. I'm delighted to say we are joined in studio by Olympic gold medalist, now a European Union gold medalist as well as of last week, and a best-selling author, turns out as well, Kelly Harrington. You're welcome back to the studio. Thanks very much for having me in. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. How does it feel to, to have a book out there now in the wild? Because it's, I I, it's doing great guns already for ahead of Christmas, and if we're allowed to mention the C words at the start of November, but you're now part of the, the gang that has bestsellers in Easton's and Dubrays and all these other places. Uh, it feels it, it's a strange feeling um, I mean anytime I've done interviews in the past I'd be like ah I can't tell you that I'm saving it for the book you know like <laughs> but I genuinely like I never thought that I, w- I would ever be doing a book like mm. um, and it's my life story and I'm only 32 do you know so it's like <laughs> like 32 years of my life is in there um, obviously not everything about my life Um you know, had to leave out a couple of X's and so on, so on. Right. <laughs> one joking, one joke. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, it's my life and, and my story. You know, uh, it's yeah, it's been mad, and I can't believe that I've put it all on paper. You know, and especially with Roddy Dial. That's the thing I was going to ask as well. Who whose idea was it? Because clearly, if, like if you're saying that you're saving stuff for the book when you're doing interviews, in the back of your head, even in a small part of the back of your head, you're probably thinking, yeah, there might be a book in this. Where did Roddy I genuinely Quint- never thought. Oh, really? Like, okay. See, I, I always said that just to get away from the conversation, get away from Stop the Stop talking topic, about yourself. You know, like, yeah. uh, and, and not even that, like, because people would be trying to pull out my life that, like, at that time I was like, no, I don't, I'm not telling anybody that. Like, mm. I don't want people to know that, you know, like, at that time, you know. Um, and then, obviously, I, like, when I was asked about the the book, I thought about it. I spoke to my family. Um, I spoke to Mandy. Now there was a bit of like, I don't know, should you? Um, and I was like, I don't know, should I either? You know, like, and we were kind of just messing around with it for a while. And then I, I, I was like, well, if I'm doing it, there's only one person that I want to do it with, and it is Roddy. Um, and Roddy was actually busy, so I ended up just getting his number and uh, sent him a text message and met up with him, had a chat. And told told Roddy a good bit about my life, and he he just thought there was like there was a book in it, you know. He mm. he 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 said it like there is a good story there, and there is a book in it, and so that was it. Then we I was kind of like right okay, but then like even before we sat down to have our first session, I was very very nervous in the sense I was like, is this a good thing? Like you know, mm. do I really want people to know my life story? do I really want to get into the nitty and gritty? Because people judge you, you know, like, whatever you say, you're always going to have people saying something about about that, you know, like, mm. and the fact of the matter is, that's my life story. It is what it is. It, it, and everything in it is what has happened to me. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't do this book to hurt anybody or anything like that, you know. It, it's just, it is my life story. And mm. that's a part of my past. It, it is what has made me who I am today. What were those kind of sessions like? Because you know the way in, say, say like in movies, they don't they like film the first scene first and the last scene last. They kind of chop and change and move around a bit. Did you take it in a linear kind of way with Roddy or was it, we'll talk about the Olympics, we'll go back and talk about how you started, we'll go and do that. What way did those kind of sessions go? Yeah, it was like, it was, it was like, it was kind of a bit of everything at all different times, you know, uh, and Roddy was piecing it together. And during those sessions and after the sessions, I was always like, how can you put that together? You know, how can you actually make a book out of that? Like, how? Because, like, there's not a hope in hell I would be able to. I Like, it'd be all scrambled, like, you know, like, and um, it was just crazy because then, like, when, as we were getting closer to finishing up, like, he was just coming out with, like so much like for me to read over and I was like wow I can't believe like that's mad how you actually like got my life story from everything that we've talked about and was able to you know what I mean like put it all in the right in the right pages and was it really regimented like was it like you sit down every Friday because it was talking to Roddy Collins about his book with Paul Howard and they would have basically every Friday was squared off for them to sit down and chat through everything and take it down on tape and then Paul would go away and write it up or whatever like, did you just have a day or was it... No, uh, like, we were quite relaxed with it, you know. Uh, um, I'd either go to Roddy's office or Roddy would call to my house, I could call to his house. It was very relaxed. Um, and 
before we'd meet, like I could text and say, Roddy, you're around on this day? And he, I'd say, he'd say, yeah. And I'd say, right, let's, let's get a session in. Mm. Or he'd text me and say, you're free on this day. And, and that's the way we worked it, you know, like, and it was like, we'll do three hours on, on tour stay, Kelly, like, and we'll have a break, we'll go for a coffee and a scone, like, or whatever in between, you know, like, mm. so, because if you're there for three hours talking, like, it, it can get... It takes it out of you. It does, literally, yeah. like, and, and I quite like therapy sessions as well, you know, like, you just... <laughs> missing was the couch, like, essentially, oh. yeah. <laughs> did it feel like that in any sense, like, in, um, in a genuine sense, did it feel like therapy in that you were, did there be certain elements of your past that you were getting them out there to finally let them go, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like, I mean... So, for instance, like, the way I was saying, people always... They're trying to dig stuff up of your past, like, yeah. and I'd be like, I'm saving that for the book. So, talking about stuff like that kind of was like, oh, thank God I've got it off my chest because now they're not going to keep asking me about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's out there now, like, and if anybody says that, and I'll say, just look at the book, do you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to keep asking me these questions, you know, like... Uh, and I suppose it is, like somewhat of a therapy session you know there was times when I did cry I had a good a good cry you know but it's I suppose that's anybody digging up the past that that has a past is well there's a lot of it as well is a very much a solo venture and what comes through a lot of it is how especially in the last I can't say six seven years particularly you became more focused more driven and a lot of that especially if you're in a solo sport is being inside of your own head a lot of the time and dealing with your own experiences and not like you'd have money you'd have your family but not necessarily a wider world would have kind of known about what you're going through and you kind of have to internalise an awful lot of stuff during the course of training during the course of tournaments during the course of whatever to actually let it out there as well it's got to be a, a bit on the cathartic side yeah like I mean when you're when you're going through all that especially in the last seven years does the outside world don't see they obviously don't know your past. They don't mm. know what, ha like they they hear a little bit about it, you know, but they don't know to do, to what extent. Um, and sometimes the the past does creep up, and you, you know, and like you kind of end up taking stuff out then on your on your ones who do know everything about your past, yeah. you know. And it is it, it is hard and it is challenging, but I mean, I'm I'm just I'm blessed with Mandy's, you know, and my family that. Um, that they're very patient and and they know me and yeah. they know exactly what way I am what what my reaction to things are you know like and and they're able they can see what way I'm going to react before it even happens you know they do like that that comes through in the book an awful lot whether it's you saying you want to get into boxing and there was nobody really who went I do really think you should be doing that it yeah. was just okay that's what Kelly's doing to even like coming out and then being all like do you think we're thick or something like yeah, yeah. Are we didn't spot yeah. that I want to take you back to actually start now because a lot of people are going to be really interested in that to think how an Olympic gold medalist actually got their start most boxing people as you point out in the book would have family would have some kind of background would have you know somebody who's gotten them into it it just seems like this kind of landed in your lap or you landed in boxing's lap or like and through Joey O'Brien and getting into Corinthians you got your start there what was the spark for you that went I want to be a boxer or at least I want to train in boxing because those are I guess two different things yeah um Growing up, obviously, I went down the wrong path. That's what the whole book is about. But I suppose as well, when I when I was when we were at home with me three brothers, we'd all have a we'd all be killing each other, you know. Well, mainly me and my older brother, um, and we just like we just used to have fights, like. And yeah. my dad be like, leave them off, like you know, let them let them at it. Me mum be saying, Christy, stop them. They're gonna kill each other. And he'd be like, no, they'll stop now in a minute. They'll, they'll get tired, you know, like. And I suppose like. I always kind of, I enjoyed that, like, and I know that sounds crazy, but I did enjoy that, like, because we never hurt, do you know what I mean? We'd never, like, it was more like, kind of, more than, like, we're never boxing the head off each other, but more so, like, woolling each other around the floor, like, wrestling and pulling each other and pushing each other, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And I knew that's what I, like, I knew I was kind of good at it, you know? So I suppose then, obviously seeing Joey all the time because I was hanging around in the flats and I knew he was a boxing coach um, and then seeing people from around the community going to the club with their uh, gear bags on their shoulders and stuff I just thought like you know what like that might be something that I would like to try and then obviously Katie as well like she was you know she was flying the flag then as well so I seen that she was doing it and 
then I was thinking, you know, I like doing I like doing this at home and brother like having the mad scraps and stuff like let's try a, let's see can we get into the club and and if if Katie can do it then we can why can't I you know exactly yeah um you, it took a while to kind of like you mentioned in the in the book like getting carded fights and working your way up to all that kind of stuff and it did take you a while before you actually got your Focus, I guess, in twenty twelve was was a factor in that, and seeing Katie win the gold medal in yeah. in, in London certainly, and and there are other kind of things around that too, and I'm thinking that you can compete with those people that she's competing with and stuff like that. Yeah, of course, like and so I've been I've been following her for absolute like forever, basically, yeah. you know, and um, I've been, I've watched her in London, um. Now I'd never thought of the Olympics at this stage. You know what I mean? Like I know because like she was the inspiration the role model and I never thought I'd ever be anywhere near that level yeah. do you know like I was like oh, Olympics Jeannie Mac like could never get there like but what she's doing is brilliant you know like and then 2016 I was out in the world championships with Katie and I had been away with Katie also before that mm. um, but 2016 we were out there and um, I had won a medal and so Katie won a medal and it was great you know uh and we come home and she had qualified for, for Rio Olympics and when we come home there was a training camp on and I had sparred with Estelle Mosley who was the she actually won the world championships in 2016 and yeah. she qualified also for, for the Olympics um, so she come over and I'd had a, a, a I had a training camp so I was her sparring partner before the the Rio Olympics and I like I'd watched the Olympics, the Rio Olympics, I've been following them. I was supporting Katie all the way, you know, and uh then Mosley went on and, and won gold out there and I was thinking I've been sparring with her like and it's actually like it's been a close enough spar. Like I was able to hold my own with her. Yeah. And I'm not saying that like I was I was beating her in sparring by any way, shape or form, but I was holding my own with her, you know, and uh I just started to think, you know what, like maybe I, maybe now is the time for me to, to drop down to the Olympic weight and see if it goes, if if I can, if I can qualify for for the next Olympics, you know, um, but I didn't like I it wasn't like I I set out like oh, I'm gonna go to the Olympics and this is what this is my dream. That wasn't the case, you know. Like mm. it was just literally like a kind of a, a moment where I'm like, I might actually be all right at this let's let's give it a bash like and let's let's just go in like and I grew a little bit of confidence then from 2016 on like and that's the way it has it's kind of just happened like my confidence just kept growing and then ever since that I'm just like you know what I know I am good enough to to be up there with the best in the world and if I'm beat I'm gonna get beat by one of the best mm. do you know like and that's, that's the way I look at it that you know? kind of Treads throughout the book whereby you're talking about certain opponents and you're thinking, oh geez, I'm going up against this one, or oh, geez, like she's able to do this, she's able to do that. Whereas it morphs into, well, she has to go up against me, and like she has to face me, and I have enough confidence and you know I'm sure about my own abilities that I can actually put together a fight that can beat her. And that's a journey to go on, and that's a great moment of self realization you get as well to realize that you are the one who's in charge of. I guess your own destiny, I guess you want to put it that way. Exactly. And I would never be out there and saying that. Do you know, I would never be like, as in when someone asks us, and how do you think it's going to go? I'd be like, ah, look, it will be what it, it will be. But in my head, I'm always like trying to be positive and, yeah. you know, and see the, the, I'm always trying to see the outcome of it before it happens, you know. But I would never be like, oh, I'm going to win, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, you know. I try yeah. to stay grounded like and let let me let the training that I've done for the the couple of weeks well not weeks well I've forever basically yeah. but the really hard graft in the last yeah. 12 weeks let that speak for itself you know yeah Th throughout the course obviously of, of talking about Katie and, and coming up alongside her and, and, and seeing her in tournaments as well and obviously Pete Taylor plays a, a massive role in your career and in the book as well um you were critical of certain aspects of, of his coaching methods and uh, how he would have treated other boxers other than Katie. In the book, he's 
fired back and shot back on social media in the last 24 hours or so have you seen any of that stuff since or do you take much I out haven't of it? seen any of the stuff that's being honest with you but right. people have asked me have I seen any of right. it and I haven't seen any of it and I don't really need to look at it because at the end of the day my journey is my journey do you know like and that is my experience and that is it, it's my book it's my life and it is what it is do you know um I've never I, I've never set out to cause any upset to anybody do you know yeah. or upset anybody um, like, I mean, it's it's in the book. I I I've, I've say it in the book about Katie. I would say about how I wouldn't challenge her. Like how I never had the confidence. I'm saying it now. How I never had the confidence. You know, I have confidence now because of what I have achieved. Because of my training. Because I I I stepped up and I was like, right, let's see. Mm. You know, but and I also like. It is what it is. Do you know what I mean? That that's my experience. I don't I don't have anything else to say about it. You know, uh, and what I will say is though that Katie Taylor is a fantastic athlete, a, a really great role model to anybody, man, woman, child. It doesn't matter mm. to me. You know what I mean? And I've never ever had any uh, bad feelings towards Katie. Like she's been my role model. How could you? Like know. you know, it, that, apart from a moment of like tension where she's cheering on somebody else in the elite, I think it was like it yeah, that's it. Book, like, like but that's yeah. like. That's a micro snapshot of. But that's my role yeah. model, you know. That for me, it's like, oh my god, like my role models in someone else's corner. Like yeah. I like, that's like a heartbreaking moment for me. Do you know what I mean? At that stage, because literally, like all the pictures of my whole bedroom now. Not sounds really weird, but like she's my role model. Like she's like people have pictures of David Beckham and Cristiano Ronaldo on their walls. Do you know what I mean? Like she was like she was my role model growing up and then next of all she's in Alana's corner cheering for her. I was like, Oh my oh god, do you know what I mean? Like you're my role model, like not hers, you know, but uh I've always thought like I've always I've always thought Katie is great, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, would you would you have heard that Katie's yeah. father and Katie to me are two different people and uh, like it doesn't like yeah, I'd would you have any interest in reaching out to him to try and not necessarily uh, settle the wrong word, but to just to clear things up? I think probably would be the best way of putting to it. Who? Clear to Pete. To Pete? Ah, oh, no, absolutely not. Like no. I don't have anything. Like I don't. There is nothing to clear up. Do okay. you know what I mean? Like I know what I know, and he knows what he knows, and all the people in the boxing world know what they know, and it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? That's my story. Is my story, and I've yeah, I've. Like I really don't I don't have anything more to say about it. Like it's just it is what it is. I, I am where I am and and Katie's where Katie is and Pete's where Pete is, you know, like and uh, one of the uh, one of the great stories in the book uh, is like as you become more serious about what you're doing and wanting to qualify for the twenty twenty Olympics, there's this thing of kind of almost uh, shedding bad habits. So whether it's like trying to make weight in certain ways or if it's trying to train in certain ways but also dropping the alcohol was another thing. That came from an incident really in the, the Europeans, I think it was in Bulgaria as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Whereby you'd gone out earlier than expected and you were told, listen, when we're here, we're here to work, we're here to fight, we're here to, you're not here to party. But there was an incident where essentially you kind of, one drink led to... Led to another, yeah. Well, that was it. Uh, it was just me and another girl and there was, no one even knew about it. Do you know what I mean? So it was... That was grand. No one knew until until the book came out. <laughs> but um, yeah, I felt like I had a harsh decision out there, you know. Yeah. And um, that was me. La that was the last time then that I had a drink because I got an awful fright, <laughs> an awful fright. So it was probably a blessing in disguise. Um, and then after that, then yeah, I haven't. What was the fright? I just kept getting sick. Yeah. And I just thought, I had the fear, like, I had the fear, I was thinking, like, I'm never going to box for my country again, like, this is it now, and I'm going to be kicked off the team, and, you know, like, oh, it was, it was, I did, I had some fear, I tell you, but, yeah. uh, so no one knew, because we just, I was in bed now for, I think, 10 to 12, like, but I was getting sick all night, like, and I just thought, like, that's it, I'm never going to be able to box you again. You thought you were like, going to be called for a rematch as well. I, I, yeah, yeah, because it was, the fight, probably should have went my way, you know, and yeah. I could hear the coaches then 
outside the door saying uh, we want the rematch and I was like oh my god that's it like I'm never that's me done like I'm like I've let me country down and I genuinely felt like I had let me country down I was like I oh, let me country down I'm gonna have to go and fight and I'm 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 not able for it you know like so that was it like I was like this can't happen again you know like yeah. cannot do that again so that was the it, it all leads forward obviously to to you progressing and and kind of going from silver medals to, to gold medals in, in in worlds and Europeans and stuff. And then on to the Olympics. I think you're one of the few people who was probably a little bit glad that COVID in a way came along when it did in terms of timing because it almost suited you to kick things down the roads. Yeah. Six months was would have been ideal, I guess, but a year and a bit is what it turned out to be. But it kind of came along at the right time, that first lockdown for yourself. Yeah, well, I broke my hand uh, twice in 2019, so I definitely wasn't ready. And Well, I don't know, probably was ready. I don't know, like, but I, I ju in my head, I think everything happens for a reason, yeah. you know, and uh, I just think the fact that I had two thumb breaks in 2019, 2020 probably wouldn't have... Uh, been ideal to go back out, you know, because I went back out too quick in twenty in twenty nineteen, and that's how I redone it again. Um, I think I had two or three fights or something and redone it like so. Just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right, and yeah. it, it was only getting stronger in twenty twenty. You know, like it wasn't strong, it wasn't strengthened up or anything, but it was only building back up. So to have that, like to have that period of time to to train and to get back in to get back into sparring and stuff was, was ideal. Like, Did you feel it almost gave you an extra time to focus ahead of the Olympics? Setting, setting the injury aside, but not getting caught up in the tumult of everything that leads towards the Olympic Games to give it a little bit of time to breathe before you actually go there? See, you asked me that question, right? But I don't really know what happens in, in the run-up to an Olympic Games, you know? So I, yeah. I, it's not like I could say, yeah, I did, because I never, I'd never been trying never, to get to yeah. Olympic Games before. So I don't know what that, what that would have been like or anything. You know, but uh, yeah, it was it was very, it was very like there wasn't a whole lot going on. Like you know, uh, it was quiet enough because obviously COVID and all the restrictions and training camps were tests everywhere here and there. Like but as you in, to go back working in Vincent's during that time as well. Yeah, I went back. Uh, yeah, went back. I mean, had to do something. You know, like couldn't be sitting at home twiddling my thumbs. Like, yeah. um, and I enjoyed it. Like I, I loved it. I became. The European gold medalist for shadow boxing while I was there. <laughs> How does that even like? What's I know, the, I know. It, yeah. it, it was crazy. Uh, the European, the EUBC, the European Boxing Council yeah. put out a, a challenge, and it was the European shadow boxing. Because obviously there was nothing going on, you know. Like so, they were like, we have to fill time. Yeah, to, you know. So, yeah. Now, yeah. So they ran a a, a shadow boxing challenge and me being me I was like oh let's do this and while I was in work I was like right come on and we do something like for the crack like and mm. I just got the women in work uh, going around with like a card saying round one and someone with the milk jug going ding ding and then I come in and take <laughs> off my work coat and start shadow boxing and they're like go on Kelly <laughs> box the head off that shadow <laughs> but um, you've never had like dull career choices put it that way like between working in Vincent's and before that like deciding you wanted to go into the army originally yeah. and doing like the training up in Gormans then and stuff like that like, they, yeah. now it, when I say like it was only four months it was short lived yeah. but it was yeah. uh, it was like it was exciting it was part of me growing up you know yeah. like it was a part, like all my life uh, my whole story is a part of like decisions that I make is like like it's you know, uh, I enjoyed it. Like, well, I didn't enjoy it too much, to be honest. But like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're going to want to leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that was that was an experience, like a a, a crazy experience. Yeah, because it, it's and it sounds rough because people kind of think, ah, oh, like the Irish Army, what do they do? But like, you're like you're probably the first person I've sat opposite who knows how to handle and clean a machine gun. Yeah, but yeah. Well, that. I wouldn't be able to know, to be honest with you, like, but. Uh, I did, uh, maybe I probably didn't know how to do it either when I was there, like, <laughs> but um, no, it was a very, very different world to what I'm living now, that's for sure. There is some kind of parallels to it, though, when you think about the level of, when you're doing the, say, the tic-tac training with Zor or whatever, and you're having to do certain routines yeah. and all that kind of stuff and reacting to, to certain punches. There is an element of the regimental and being asked to follow advice and follow instructions from your drill sergeant or whatever. Like they kind of, there is a bit of a parallel there, I guess. It's I I suppose like even just for 
from boxing in general, like hmm. uh, the discipline side of it, like. Well, I went in there when I literally only went 18, so I was only gone 18 when I was in there. So I'd been, like, I've, I'd wanted to go into the army since I think I was, oh, Jesus, 14 or something like Why? that, you know, for the discipline. Discipline, okay. Yeah, literally, like, I, and, and I wanted to train, like, but I didn't realise how hard the training was going to be, you know, yeah. like, uh, that was a, that was a, a smack of reality when I got in and, I, and then it was, uh, look, would I be able for the training now? Absolutely. Like, would I be able for someone screaming in my face now? Probably not. <laughs> like, but um, it was that's that's what I wanted. You know, I wanted to to join the army for the discipline. Um, and again, like I wanted to get in when I was fourteen, and obviously I was going down that pathway, and yeah. that was it. And it's like I was like army boxing. Like you know, these are two things that can definitely change my life. Like, of course, uh, yeah. you know, like, uh, and that's that's what I wanted in the army, and. I just couldn't hack it, so I got my jacket and left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, listen, uh, leaving the army is probably even boxing's game and everyone else's game are gain from from that point onwards. Um, I want to talk about some of the coaches that you've worked with as well, because you've been fierce lucky with like the likes of Billy Walsh, who's been in charge of high performance, uh, morphing into Bernard, and we met, we touched on Zor there. He's kind of this, been this uh, godfather of, of Irish amateur boxing for the past decade or more, and yet people don't necessarily know a whole heap about him, about him because he doesn't put himself out there that much and uh, I, 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 he's, I, he's so well regarded I think by absolutely everybody who's ever come across him and I don't think you'd be any different in that respect either would you? He's No, Zor is um, one of the best coaches in the world technically and his eye for, for boxing for reading fights is just fantastic like that man he doesn't like I genuinely don't think he gets more than four hours sleep a night because he is constantly doing homework on opponents, on how to, on what I need to do to get better, and what other people need to do to get better, and you know, like on your technique, and he's looking at other ways other people train. Like his brain is constantly going. You know, he's 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 fun. He's he, he is one of the best coaches in the world. But alongside, or you have all the other high performance coaches yeah. as well, and they all knit in together. Like you have. You have John, you have Dima, you have Owen, Damien. Like, there's so many of them, like, and they all tie in together and everyone plays plays a vital role out there in getting us to where we are. But it does start from grassroots, you know, so you don't just rock up there and they make the perfect Course, yeah. boxer, you know. Like, it starts from grassroots and, like, from volunteer coaches that aren't getting paid a, a, a cent to, to take on a 13 or 14 year old Kelly Harrington and give them all their time while they also work a, a full time job and have a wife and kids at home you know like this is true of I guess a lot of sports in this country but I, I think it's highlighted from the fact that boxing is so successful on the, on the international stage for Ireland converse to that it doesn't seem to get looked after to the same degree that it looks after the country if you know what I mean so you've got you and, and sundry others going off and winning medals almost as routine at this stage I know you wouldn't regard it as such but it almost becomes like that um, and it has been the case for a decade and a half or more whereby Olympic Games comes around and we're almost expected to win a medal or two or possibly three from a Games. And, and yet, then if you don't, then everyone's like, ah, oh, they're bleeding awful. Oh, no, <laughs> it's not that. It's it's more a case of, like, I don't think that the, the, the we've heard it before in other sports that the money for coaching especially isn't there and isn't what it should be commensurate to how the sport performs on the international stage. Would you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I do think it, it is fair to say. Um, I mean, just the whole, like, even, like, boxing just doesn't get the coverage that it should get either. You know, it's it's right co across the board, you know, uh, and the money's just not there. Like, they need to, they need to in invest in more money. Like, uh, sport is great, all sports is great, but look at all the medals that's come home this year like uh, from boxing alone and last year from the Olympics you know like him, like we've we've two world champions this year uh, Amy Broadhorst and Lisa O'Rourke um, seven of us then out in the Europeans bringing home medals and uh, out of a team of ten and ten like the other the other three girls were exceptionally brilliant out there you know and just pipped like at the seams for, for medals like uh and then you have the men's team as well, like who 
they've done well in the in the Europeans this year uh, this year and then they just had a multi nations just literally before we went out to the worlds and sure. they brought back a gold medal uh, um young Sean Murray did like and the other lads as well. Uh, I can't remember what medals now. My brain's gone mush, but uh, <laughs> there's too many. Of them. There, there is yeah. like and, and and it is like like that that is boxing, you know. Like and and there is no wears or graces about anybody. You just get in and you just get it done. And we're out there. We're based now out in Abbottstown. Uh, Tuesday to Friday, two sessions a day, yeah. grueling sessions. Like they are grueling. Like and then you're training in your own club as well on the Monday and pro- possibly the Saturday. You know, and but even if you didn't go on to be a high performance boxer, like even if you look at what it did for Kelly Harrington, who was growing up in Portland Row and whose life was, you know, a little bit going askew, she decided to turn to boxing and it completely righted her path. And that is true for God knows how many others as well. And yet still you hear stories of, you know, rings that are being barely held together, of changing facilities that aren't what they should be. And yeah. these are basic things. And that that's what people right. need to think of. And and do you know what? Like, I'm glad you said that because I couldn't think of it. Like, so that's 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 exactly the way. And that's what that's what like the minister for sport, Sport Ireland, all the local councillors and TDs need to be looking at. You know, like you're right. It like the, we bring in the medals. It's great, but you're spot on with what you said. Mm. It is all the Kelly Harringtons that it's helped out. You know, all the Eric Donovans, all you know, like. That's exactly what it is like, and all the money in the world couldn't, you know, if you could save a couple of kids from from that, like, is isn't that just fantastic, like, and and that's what that's what needs to be happening. The facilities, in a lot of clubs, are absolutely terrible, you know, really terrible, like, and these coaches are trying their best, you know, not 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 necessarily everyone's going to win even a Dublin Lakes. But they're still taking kids in and they're still trying their best to, to give them a second chance at life, not just boxing, like at life, you yeah. know, and you've hit the nail on the head and glad. Thanks for, for saying that. <laughs> at the other end of the scale, uh, you do have uh, Olympic Games and you're obviously going to hopefully prepare for another one in two, year, two years, time, two and a year and a half, a year and a bit's time. Uh, almost, yeah, yeah, so. close enough, yeah. It's like, whew. <laughs> well, look, I'm yeah. losing track. Myself. That one being delayed a year has completely thrown me off. But anyway, um, how do you reflect on Tokyo now that we're from this vantage point? Um, it's been incredible, you know. Uh, it's been great. People say, "How does it feel to be an Olympic champion?" And I'm like, it "Feels the same as every other day," you know. Like I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to feel, really. You know, like uh, you're supposed to be about twenty feet tall and have yeah, to yeah, medal you know, and, like, like you're wearing times. it all the time. Yeah. Like it's gas. People say, "Have you got your medal on it?" And you're like. No, I, I just left it at home. I didn't bring it with me today, you know. Like the shops, you never pay for anything. You really <laughs> but um, no, it's uh, it's been a great year. Um, I just think for women, women in boxing, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm just glad that it kind of has like given uh, brought a lot of new girls through the doors, we- doors as well, and there's a lot of girls who are coming through in the juniors and the youth and the the girls stages, like your mm. one, two, three, um. And they're kind of getting inspired off that, you know, like as well as getting inspired off the the Michaela's, the Amy's, the Ephes, the Lisa's, the well, Katie's. You are know, you like, worried for them the the uh, the way the boxing is being looked at by the higher ups and the IOC in that its place in Los Angeles in twenty eight uh, mightn't be safe or is far from secure now at this stage? Do you think that's something that needs to be sorted out sooner rather than later, or is I, it kind of beyond your? Beyond your sphere. Yeah, I don't like to be very honest with you. I just, I don't, I don't think that I haven't even, I don't even look into that. That's being honest with you. I haven't like, and it's not like I'm not being selfish and what what have you. But I just, I just try and think of the next tournament. You know, like my next tournament will be the elites in January. And um, that's all I'd be looking at. Like I'm not even looking at like the like I know the qualifiers are next year, and that's when I'll know whether I'm qualified or whether I'm retired, one or the other. You know, like. And that's that's kind of it. You take step by step. But what I'm not worried about is where women's boxing is going okay. because it's gone from strength to strength. And I tell you now, like when you look at uh, girl boxing, uh, junior junior girls and the youth girls, like and and the elites, obviously, like. But when you when I look looking back now at at those girls coming up, like it's it's actually it's actually frightening how good they are. Like they're absolutely. Brilliant, like really, really good. The you started talented. off. There's like the you, you look behind you when you're starting off. There's one or two standing there, and now you look behind you, and there's dozens. That's 
and it's testament to something that you've done, something that Katie's done, something that all the, the other girls has done. Yeah, the other yeah. like it's it's stunning to see how quickly it has evolved in such a relatively short space of time. It's it, like it really is like the, and they're so technical. You know, they're so technical and some of them are hard hitters and everything. <laughs> I, I love it. Like, I just, I love watching them. I love hearing about them. I love following the results. And You're it's be just a coach? really, that is something that I would love to do. I'd love to go into coaching. Um, I don't know how I would be in the corner, uh, but I'd, I'd be good on the pads and on the floor, like coaching. But in the corner, I would probably lose it. Like, you know. I don't know. Your power recall in the book is something else. Like, the way you're able to pick through quarterfinals, second, like, quarter, second rounds, and. I don't know if this is you looking back on videos in preparation for the book or whether it's, you know, just you. But if you're if that's just you being able to tell how a fight went in a quarterfinal eight, ten years ago, that needs to go into coaching because that will be an immense help that I was going to remind you. Yeah, and, and that's what I want. I want, look, I want to, I want to be able to share whatever I have with them, whatever I have, you know, like my ways of coping through competitions and all, you know, like, and, being single minded when you're out there as well, like, you know, and I want to be able I want to be around that, like, and I want to be a part of of the future, like, you know. Yeah. That's well, what I'd love to, to do. It's just to give back. And not not just to, to women but to, to young lads coming through as well. Like it's so but but I really don't know how I would be in the corner because I think I would be just like ah! I panic. I wouldn't but, You're the opposite of the calm coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah. like Noel and John and Zora like and Dima they're well I don't, actually don't know because I don't see them while I'm fighting <laughs> but they probably are going off their head in the corner but uh, yeah I, I it's, it's something that I that I really would like to do and I actually have been uh, I've been trying to sort out going away to do me um, one star international coaching course because okay. you know like boxing doesn't last forever either nice. and like um, like if I get a job coaching I get a job coaching if I don't I still have my other job in the hospital I'm ha very happy there and that's my I think that's probably my happily ever after anyway so yeah long may your role in boxing continue in this country Kelly Harrington it's been an absolute pleasure to spend the last half hour with you thanks very much really appreciate it thank you